presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hey, Robert, how you doing, man? Yes, and thank you for taking my call. I wanted to Morning. let you know that I've been a subscriber for a couple of years, just different members of your team, and I really enjoy it. But really the reason I'm calling is to express my sincerest gratitude for you providing that information information yesterday on the small business grant. I'm a small business owner, primary breadwinner for my family, and if I can get that money, it's going to really mean a lot to my family, so that's awesome. thank you for uh, taking the time to do that. No, uh, well, listen, man, we appreciate you growling and proud with us. Now, Tom O'Brien. What's going on, everyone? This is Jacob Shoopy. You're watching the Tom O'Brien Show. Happy Election Day. Uh, I went earlier this morning, probably around like 8 o'clock. And uh, it, it really was a Florida crowd there. Uh, we had the guy who was manning the door. He had this like two piece linen suit on with like a macaw parrot that he had painted uh, down the full length. There was a guy wearing uh, Birkenstocks and a Rasputin t shirt, just like a t shirt with a picture of Rasputin on it, which makes me, you know, wonder who he voted for and why. Uh, I think that'd be interesting. And then unfortunately, when you're in the auditorium where you're voting, you're not supposed to have your phone on, you're supposed to be off. and uh, someone had not done that, and uh, piercing the silence of the auditorium was a uh, pretty explicit song by 50 Cent, and the guy could not figure out how to turn off uh, the phone. It, it was just kind of an interesting time. It really woke me up this morning. So I hope you all got out there and uh, voted, and that's what you decided you wanted to do. Uh, let's take a look what we got. Well, the market's kind of treating this all right. You have the composite up about 1.25%. The Dow Jones Industrial up about 0.83%. Yeah, the dollar coming off a little bit, again, away from its like most recent highs around that like 104 level or trading down uh, below 103.50 at 103.44. Now you have crude oil coming up. This is just going to be on today, uh, but you have some interesting developments that are going on, right? And that's namely some fears from some of these oil traders. Uh, they're concerned that what's happening in the Middle East right now is going to kind of... Uh, Get agitated a little bit more. It seems uh, that Netanyahu just fired um, Yoav Gallant, which is a problem uh, for people, I would say, who, who want kind of like a more peaceful solution to what's going on. Um, Gallant very much did not uh, want to continue uh, on this path uh, that they're going for in Gaza of what Netanyahu uh, called, quote, total victory. Uh, so you have some oil traders, some of them are hedging against a $100 price. Uh, it, which is kind of nuts, right? Um, but it remains to be seen. Of course, we really do need to figure out as well uh, who kind of wins this election and what policy they'll take. Of course, there's been a lot of conversation uh, around how we don't really inform Israel of what to do and Israel kind of decides uh, themselves. But of course, uh, we're very inextricable, at least our intelligence agencies. And there is some consideration that goes in there. Uh, so we'll kind of just see what happens with that. You have gold contract moving uh, higher right now, up about 0.17% at 2,750. You have copper trading up 0.55 at $4.45. That Russell, yeah, man, up 1.55% as it stands now. And then silver up 0.43, trading at 32.75. Uh, so every Tuesday, we are joined in the early segments by Basil Chapman. Now, Basil Chapman is the author of the opening call newsletter. Go ahead and check that out. And of course, he hosts his own show at 10 a.m. Eastern time, the Tiger Technicians Hour, right here on Tiger Financial News Network. Now, what I wanna say about the opening call is not only do you get really fantastic kind of insight uh, into what Basil's looking at, uh, but you also get access to all these really fantastic lecture webinars. The most recent one he did was July 23rd. That is uh, sectors and stocks to focus on at this next phase of the market cycle. Of course, when he's been coming on, he's been uh, giving us some, some pretty good nuggets of information. So I recommend going ahead and checking that out. If it is your first time, I wanna tell you, we have a 30 day money back guarantee on all of our newsletters, so you can try this out risk-free and for whatever reason it doesn't work for you, you can get your money back, but we're betting that it is going to. I believe right now we are joined by Basil Chapman. Basil. Yes, we are. Hi, Jacob, how are you? I'm doing well, how are you doing? I'm very good, thank you. 
Well, what are we taking a look at today? I'm honestly surprised the market is, yeah, it's kind of like picked up, at least looking at the E-mini. I mean, we had some nice movement to the upside today, even with kind of this uncertainty that's going on with the presidential election. Um, so it's nice to kind of see some stuff. I'm, I'm wondering what you're looking at today. So there are a couple of things that are going on, but the most important is if we look at the, I've got the chart of the Dow on the left. So this is a daily chart right here. There it is. In the middle is the weekly chart, and on the right is the monthly chart. Mm -hmm. And what's the most important thing as far as I'm concerned is this middle chart. <clears throat> I have a technique that I use. It's using the nine-period moving average. If it's over the 14-period moving average, it turns green. <clears throat> and very positive. If it's under the 14 period moving average, this black line here, it goes it goes pink. Okay. So, and just to, uh, just to show you what I'm talking about, it works in every time frame. Look, here's the, uh, here's the five minute chart of the E-mini. It went positive at uh, 9.30 this morning, 9.35, it went green. It doesn't even matter about the Chapman wave counts. They went to a peak D, pulls back, holds the nine period moving average. They went to a peak F. Um, the six highest peak and pull back. And you can see that green line kept you in the trade all the way until it went pink. But the 10-minute chart, so this is how I use daily, weekly, monthly charts. Mm -hmm. You can imagine that this one-minute chart on the left is the daily. In the middle is the five-minute. We call that the weekly. And on the right, you can call that the monthly, although it's a 10-minute chart. But price doesn't know what it is. It just moves up and down. But look, the nine-period moving average in the 10-minute chart is still green, and even with that sharp pullback that we had at about uh, noon at 12.30 or so, it's still green as we're speaking right now. So using that same formula, using it, making it as simple as possible, you've still got a green nine-period moving average in the weekly chart of the Dow. Let's just keep it for the moment to this middle chart because we finished the monthly chart. It went to a leg E. It's still holding quite nicely. The nine period in the monthly chart is still very strong. The, the MACD is strong. The stochastics at 93%. That's fabulous. On balance volume was a little bit of the blue line is overbought and pulled back a little bit. But look, you can see that in the S&P. Let's go to the, the middle chart, which is the weekly chart of the S&P. The nine period moving average is still holding very well. And the monthly chart. Look at the QQQ. The a nine period moving average making a little bit of a double top. We went to 503.32 in the QQQ uh, back in July, pulled back very sharply, came all the way back. And where did it go to? 501.35, three cents away from that, uh, sorry, two dollars and three cents away from that previous high. So that's how I like to look at these things. Uh, even the SMHs, and the SMHs have been under quite a bit of pressure um, since the July, mid-July high of 283, pulls back sharply and rallies. That the daily chart has gone to a sell mode, but the weekly chart is still holding the green period nine nine moving average. So I just want you to go through that to say, using a kind of a core technique, and I have webinars and I discuss this all the time. I do that in my show as well. Uh, that is very important. So when we come back, I'll I'll go through where I think we are and what to look for in the, uh, in the few days ahead, because by Friday's close, it's gonna be very important. Fantastic, yeah, Basil, stay right there. Folks, we'll be right back with Basil Chap. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. 
Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Basil Chapman, the author of the opening call newsletter. Uh, Basil, let's continue. What, let's go. So I should just first of all say that we've been long the Dow um, um, for a very long time. We've been long. Even the last position that we took was back in 2023, uh, 2022 in October. And we're still holding that position. We actually also have three times long. The Dow, it's not a position you're supposed to have technically, but we, we've had it just kind of almost for fun. It's done very nicely. And we didn't go short when the Dow gave this top right here because I was thinking that the uh, weekly chart was still acting so well mm -hmm. that it might just be a shorter term uh, situation. So let's, let's just for the moment exclude the election because anything can still happen. So I'm just right. saying at this particular moment, the Dow is up. Uh, 363. It was really important that it did have a rally at this particular point because the stochastic went under 20% and started turning around, but the other technical indicators are weak in the daily chart, and it's going to take a lot. It'll take a move to about 42,000. It's at 42,155. It'll take a move to about 42,500 to really start to see them get back into sync on the upside. And if the Dow cracks 41,500, regardless, election or no election, whatever it is, if the price goes under, closes under 41,500, 41, that's going to be detrimental to the chart pattern and you've got to be careful. Right. And that could start to affect the, the weekly chart, but it'll have to go even lower than that. It'll probably have to go to 41,000 for the weekly chart to go to a sell signal and then a sell mode. So, so far, that's all positive. <clears throat> but within the whole... Uh, spectrum of the market, one of the things we've been looking for is there was a relationship of the XLF, that's the deep, that's the money center banks, and they've been doing fantastic. They went to all time, it went to the SL, the S, the XLF went to an all time high about three weeks ago to 47.81, it's trading at 46.53. But my, my, I like to look at the market in terms of relationships. So the relationship of the S&P 500 and the relationship of the XLF, I kind of put them together. I want them both to be moving to the upside in, in synchronicity. But then I want to see the small caps, the two, Russell 2000, which is the IWM, moving to try to play catch up, just like gold and silver play catch up with one another every once in a while. I want you to see the same thing. And the relationship there is that if the IWM, the small caps, the 2000, and we are long the, the small caps from the uh, 
from the most recent low, and that was in August. Um, if the small caps can actually garner some rotational strength, it'll allow for some of the really big caps like the Microsofts, maybe even NVIDIA, take, take a bit of a breather. And then I want to see the relationship of the small caps and the S&P 500, almost the same as the XLF and the KRE, which is the okay. regional banks. Yep. So if I can see the synchronicity between the small, the basic, I wouldn't even call them small caps in the regional banks because some of them are, they are multi-billions. But let's just say the, the regional banks, and it's really important for regional banks to do well. That's the general economy. I mean, that's where you garner that momentum building up the economy by having the regional banks do well. So if, if the KRE trading at 58.78 can retest its most recent high in the 61s over the next week or two, I think that'll be very good. And that'll allow for some kind of a rotation and that maybe could see the semiconductors still not leading and taking a breather, but right. it allows the market to rotate so that prices are still moving higher, even though other areas are digesting gains. To me, that's important. That's different to when you get a sell signal <clears throat> and everything comes down together. I like the rotational aspect. Yeah, absolutely. And hopefully with, you know, if we stay on this kind of, uh, you know, interest rate point cut schedule, you know, definitely you can see some light coming into the Russell. Of course, the banks can start lending a little bit more as well. And uh, so it'd be fantastic to kind of see that happening. Basil, are you looking at any uh, specific equities equities today? I know you usually talk about hood, maybe even things within uranium. I know sometimes you look at ETS. Yes. I'm just curious so, if you got uh, anything with, on that. Within the sector, excuse me. Yeah. I don't know why I suddenly got me take a drink. <laughs> you have the allergies here. That's what's doing it to me in the morning. So <laughs> no, it's terrible. Me, it's just, you know, I used to do three days in a row of webinars with TFNF. <laughs> from about eight in the morning until four in the afternoon, three days in a row. Oh, I think man. I've paid a penalty for that. So, yeah, I mean, I hear you. <laughs> so we'll see if the voice lasts. But in the meantime, <clears throat> you know, I, I, we don't have this at the moment. But if you look at some of the stocks that were really beaten down, that did fantastic, like Zoom. Okay. Zoom was a stock that went up into the 400s. That was, it was actually almost <laughs> just under 600. So Zoom technology and then video communications, and then it just that was a video that was prime in the in the, uh, the during the COVID period, and then it just I mean take a dive. It didn't just take a dive. It went down to fifty five. Yeah. I mean that's unbelievable, and you can see the monthly chart. Nothing to see. It's just a, like a flat line. But if you look at the weekly chart. It's already started to improve a lot. In fact, I almost had it as a buy this morning. And then I thought, you know, we've got one buy that we put back on. I don't want to I don't want to get too aggressive here. But look at this beautiful cup shape formation. And I had this as what I call left side, right side price tie match at 75.91. The height was made back a year ago, back in September. Um and it plummets down to 55.96. And now more aggressively, yeah. it's almost like a Chapman Wave Cup and Ladle breakout pattern. It's at 77.27. So we didn't have it. But on the next pullback, I'm going to seriously look at it. So when you say looking at, uh, when I'm talking about this rotation, this is typical of what I'm talking about, that if you can see stocks like an, a major leader like an NVIDIA take a breather, doesn't have to collapse, but just take a breath and it is going to go into the Dow when Intel comes out. You can see other stocks, and there are many of these stocks that were, I mean, CRM is uh, Salesforce. I, we don't have this, but look, at, look how well it's yeah. done since that major top that was made. Um, it's trading at 297, down 74 cents. But back in 2021, it was up in the three, three, just under 320, plummets to 126. It's more than cut in half, and now it's coming back. So I, that's why I think, so for my newsletter, we, we've got a list of stocks that we're waiting for. Uh, any, any sudden sharp pullback to be able to look at the ones that were leaders, became real failures, and now are back in the leading uh, saddle again. So I think there are quite a few, and I, I'm looking forward to any kind of pullback that we get over the next week or two. Fantastic. Well, Basil, it sounds like we might need a uh, new subscriber webinar at some point. We'll have to talk a little bit deeper on that. But it's some interesting like shifting. And I hear what you're saying with the semiconductors kind of taking a breath and other people coming back in. Uh, it definitely makes some sense. It's so. the rotation. Very important in market bull markets. Yes. Fantastic.
Well, Basil, um, thank you so much. It's always fantastic having you on. Um, I guess we're going to see you tomorrow morning, right? 10 a.m. Eastern time for the... 10 a.m. Uh, uh, excuse me, 10 a.m. Absolutely. Well, Basil, thank, thank you, you so much. We'll see you then. Thank you. Yeah, and guys, seriously, I mean, that analysis is great. You can see me at 10 a.m. Eastern time. It's fantastic. Traders, uh, excuse me, the uh, Tiger Technicians Hour. And really, check out this newsletter. It's an opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman. He also does um, some kind of market roundups at the end of the week. It's just really a solid deal, especially when you get access to those subscriber-only webinars. Folks, you stay right there. We're going to be right back with Tim Ord. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry October 11th and 25th for more live trading action. Your purchase goes towards two sessions, so make sure to sign up now so you don't miss a chance to sit next to Larry as he trades the market live. For all information and to reserve your spot today, go to the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Tom O'Brien Show is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, everyone. This is Jacob Shoup. You're watching the Tom O'Brien Show. We have the composite of about 1.28% right now. The Dow Jones Industrial up about 0.82%. 
that dollar is coming down off about 0.45% trading at 103.43. You have crude oil up about 0.98, gold contract trading up 0.17, and the E-mini up almost a full percent. Now, every third, uh, well, it's Tuesday today, but we do it Thursday as well. We are joined uh, by Tim Ord. Now, if you want to check out more about Tim Ord, I know you guys are familiar with him, but anyone new watching, which I know we got uh, quite a few, you can go over to ord-oracle.com and check out everything that he's about after the uh, the end of this segment. And additionally, if you go over to tfnn.com, you go to the services tab, and we have two uh, phenomenal webinars uh, by Tim Ord. That is the Secret Science of Market Tops, and then Six Secret Ratios, every trader should know tim how are you doing good good so yeah well today's kind of a special day is election yeah. day that happens every four years so um uh, we we're actually bullish last week we actually got along too quick and uh i went back and looked at uh the previous times Trump was a candidate was 2016 running against uh, Hillary then 2020 running against Biden and uh, the market actually declined and made a bottom uh, before the election was announced, uh, who won the election. And I was kind of watching that pretty carefully, how this market was going to do something probably similar as far as the bottom's concerned. And I noticed the 10-day trend back in 2016-2020 that it did not get to bullish uh, uh, readings. Uh, okay. But the short-term ones did. So the first chart we're going to look at uh, is actually the arms chart and the, the bottom window is it's yesterday uh, uh, this is actually a little bit of a delay but yesterday's three day arms came in at 1.18 anything around 1.2 or higher is bullish 1.18 is close enough uh, next window higher is a two day trend and I got up to uh, 1.2 uh, 1 actually 1.21 then right above that is the one day arm and yesterday's arms closed at 1.21. Uh, so actually, the, the one, two, and three day trend did get into bullish territory. The top window is a 10 day trend, and you can see it's nowhere near bullish levels. And that's similar to what happened 2016, 2019. But I did notice the one, two, and three day trend did get in bullish territory. And so we did get panic. Uh, I always said in the past, if there's no panic, there's no bottom. Well, there's different degrees or different time frames of panic. Ideally, you'd like to see the 10-day, which is basically two weeks of trading because five days in a week, 10 days, two weeks. And uh, But for some reason, during elections, that doesn't really get there. So I have to look at other things that, that kind of line up. But, you know, we're bullish. We got long actually too quick. If I didn't get long uh, last week, I definitely would have been long on what's today's Tuesday. I would have been long on Thursday, Thursday, Friday at the latest. Uh, but I already been long the market. Actually, yesterday uh, was actually the, the interday low. The closing low was actually Thursday. But let's go look on and see kind of where we are. On uh, let's go to chart two. Fantastic. And uh, this is kind of the chart that kind of kept me in, got me, um, you know, there's, charting's kind of difficult, you know, not all indicators work all the time. And this is kind of the chart that got me in, because I noticed uh, the bottom is the, just the, the, the five-day average of the advanced decline. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. And, but you want to see panic levels, you, you know, uh, when the market gets dumped on, that's usually a good sign. But if the market doesn't really get dumped on and it goes down, it will eventually get dumped on and that'd be the time to act. Yeah. Well, the time to act on, a, this is more of a shorter term indicator, but when the 10 day, or excuse me, the five day advanced decline gets below 1.65, it's used to get an indication that on a short term basis, the market's at least made a short term low. Doesn't say anything about an intermittent term low. It's just a short term low, and this chart goes back a couple of years, one two over, uh, yeah, close to two years, maybe a little longer. And uh, the white, uh, the the red lines there, uh, they're not dotted, spaded lines, I guess you might say, uh, or uh, uh, vertical, are the times when this indicator got below 0.65. Um, it was. Point, uh, point six three. I forgot what date that was, but it was uh, a week or so ago. 
when that indicator got down to 0.63, yeah, I did get blow close below 0.65, and so I was kind of figuring, okay, normally when this indicator gets down to below 0.65, the market can go down a little bit lower, but not very much. It's usually at least bounces first before it goes back down again, and pretty much is what I expected here. If you look at the chart, uh, the uh, Next window up on the five-day average of the advanced decline is the SPY. And if you notice, it comes pretty close, sometimes a little bit early, a day or two or three, but not by much. And so I was kind of getting chomping at the bit. I wasn't really uh, seeing a lot of another different indicator. So I did go long, I think. I don't have the date in front of me, but a little bit. About, we're about a percent off right now or in that vicinity as we got long but I was kind of looking for the intermittent term because once uh, the election's over the market usually rallies into year end so this is yep. more of an intermittent term trade but this was one of the indicators that kind of got me in a little bit early I wish I could have waited if I did wait I would have got the panics in, the, in that one two and three day trend that would have got me in probably again last week late last week, if not early this week. Uh, so, you know, this indicator is bullish, is coming off the bottom, so the advanced line is getting stronger, uh, which is all good. So this chart, next chart, chart three, yep. is uh, kind of looks at the nitty-gritty of a really the short term. So I was looking at the intermediate term, uh, or not the intermediate term, but uh, I was looking for panic, and once I got uh, panicked, then I kind of narrowed down to volume characteristics. And uh, this chart uh, gets me down to the volume characteristics. It also sh shows the 10 uh, that, that I labeled on the chart, uh, the trend readings and uh, the tick closes over the last several days. And also I put a Bollinger Band on this uh, On uh, this chart is actually the SPY. Um, actually, I think... It, well, we can talk here a little bit, but this chart is going to need not to be interrupted. And we got to—I uh, know we got to. Uh, no, a, certainly. Uh, well, yeah, Tim, come in here. Absolutely, yeah, it's, Tim, stay right there. We'll be right back, folks. We'll be right back with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle just after this break. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. 
a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien. Welcome back, everyone. This is Jacob Shoup. I am joined by Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. If you're watching us on YouTube, welcome. Please consider giving this stream a thumbs up. It helps us all out immensely. Tim, before we went to the break, we were looking at, I guess, a more granular uh, view of what's going on in the SPY. All right. Okay. Uh, so this is chart number three. I got a Bollinger Band on on this chart, and it's the SPY daily. And uh, the center line there is actually a twenty. Uh, the uh, dotted line between the upper Bollinger Band and lower Bollinger Band be a twenty-day average. That's all it is. And the upper band is two standard deviations away from that twenty-day moving average, and the lower band. Uh, two standard deviations below uh, the norm. So what that means is, in general, if the market gets too stretched away from the norm, it'll come back to the norm. And so I, I got red circles on this chart. And so when this works actually on a <coughs> weekly, monthly, and daily, works okay. pretty good. But it gets too far away from that dotted line, uh, which I got it circled there. In other words, uh, when it gets above the uh, upper Bollinger Band or closed, you know, uh, closed on it that first one in September, uh, but to flip the market sideways uh, in October there, that high, you got 80% above the upper Bollinger Band. That's pretty close uh, to a closing high, if not the closing high right there. And uh, the market uh, uh, actually started consolidation. And if you notice, last uh, Thursday, it closed below the Bollinger Band. Okay, that's a reason to look for bullish, just right. if not uh, to, to be just like you hit above the upper Bollinger Band, same thing. If you hit close below the up, lower Bollinger Band, you'll have a snapback. It's, it went too fast in one direction, and you know, the market always wants to go back to norm. If you also notice there, I got a, a shaded pink area there, and there's a gap. So you're at the gap and you're at the lower Bollinger Band. So that's the bottom. So next day, you want to see what happens. And the next day pops up, uh, didn't quite close in the middle of the range, but came close. That's, that's a big clue that the market's turning around and, and may start to go upside. If you go down to the bottom window, which is a uh, I always say when the market jumps about 30%, compared to the previous days before it, that's usually where a selling climax occurs. And if you notice, I'm just eyeballing it. It looks like more like probably 25%, but 30% or more is ideal. And normally when the market surges that much, it stops. And because there's too many people trying to get out the door at the same time. Right. But usually when the market stops, so that I, call, I call it a selling climax close enough to one. This, uh, technical analysis is not exact science. There's different shades of gray. But I always say a 30% jump in volume will stop the market either going up or down. In this case, it, it stopped it going down. So anyhow, you have a selling climax. You went into the gap area. Uh, the market closed below the lower Bollinger Band. So, and if you notice, I got 1.5 trend on that day. That's leans bullish. Ideally, you like to see 1.2. Well, the next day, I do have a 1.2, uh, which uh, also some uh, 
downtick readings there of 240. So that's almost meets my parameter. I like to three, uh, see 300 downtick readings or more with a trend close of 1.2 or higher. And I call that a bullish combination. Well, yesterday we had just that. We had a, a trend close of 1.22, and we had 328 downtick readings. So that's a buy signal. So what's, what's supposed to happen today is a rally, and so so far we're getting a rally. But that's how uh, I, I did go long the other week, but I hadn't been long before that. I would have definitely been long in this configuration I just pointed out to you. So right. there's a lot of uh, bullish stuff. We do have, we got panic on our short term uh, space as not on a long, uh, as a 10 day, but we got the one uh, three day trend. So whole thing's bullish. I think this is probably uh, a bottom that will last probably into going into year end. You know, you'll maybe have some minor consolidations, but I think this is a significant low that's going to have, uh, uh, I guess, some power to it or not power. I'll have uh, time. Uh, It'll last a while, I'll put it that way. So right. I think, in general, uh, this is bullish all the way to year end. So also, seasonality is, is actually bullish in this time frame here, too. So market's going to, in my opinion, break new highs here. Uh, how much higher? You know, at least 5%, you know, maybe 10%. We'll see how it goes. Um, so anyhow, run a buy signal a little bit too quick, but there's a lot of evidence that we formed a low. Probably yesterday was a closing low. Um, and uh, the, we're actually the closing low was last Thursday. The interday low was to, uh, yesterday. So, you know, that's my take on that. Fantastic. So it's been really good. market, or, or we have more questions on this or anything? No, I think we're good. I don't see any questions in the den uh, or the chat. So we can move over to gold. Let's take a look at that. All right. This is kind of going to be pretty simple because the. Uh, the monthly time frames rule the weekly time frames. The weekly time frames rule the daily time frames. So the charts you really start to should look at is the monthly charts. Make sure you're on the right side of the market. Right. If the monthlies are on a sell signal, eventually you're going to get uh, caught in the market because the monthlies outweigh the weeklies, outweigh the dailies. So if you're trading, and you want to trade with the trend. And right now the trend's up. This is a monthly chart. It's kind of we've seen this chart before. It's nothing really much to add to it. It looks at the bigger trend, but it takes in the up down volume and advanced decline, which is basically what the market is is volume and it's up volume and down volume and it's and it all depends on advance and decline. So when both those indicators are bullish, in other words, up volume is outperforming down volume and advancing issues outperforming declining issues, that's a bull run. And that's what these two indicators do. The okay. bottom window is the uh, GDX monthly, GDX up down volume. Uh, yeah, it's up down volume. And next higher window is GDX advanced decline. And that's a cumulative up down volume, a cumulative advanced decline. The top one is GDX. And I gave buy signal back in, I think it was March or April of this year. The buy signal comes when both indicators close above the mid Bollinger Band. And both did, and both are, are trending higher. What that means is advancing issues are outperforming declining issues on a monthly time frame, and the up volume is outperforming the down volume on a monthly time frame. And market trends, uh, they don't just chop around. Uh, these trends last a while. Uh, if you go back and look, you know, between those red and blue lines, there's a year and a half uh, minimum. So the, the bicycle in March, less, in my opinion, at least another year. Uh, into late next year at a minimum. So you'll have some minor consolidations, but not any major consolidations. Right. If you look at the weeklies, which is the next one, kind of a similar, similar situation. So weeklies are clearly on a, a buy signal here. Uh, same method, Bollinger Band, you close above it, it's bullish. And this, uh, the weeklies gave a buy in, in March of this year. So yeah, Tim, don't see any trouble. Tim, stay right there. I um, want to keep you over, and I know we got a short segment, but I want to hear what you have to talk about with uh, some of the other chart as well. All right. Folks, stay okay. right there. We'll be right back with Tim Ward of the Ord Or.
Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN educating investors don't forget you can listen to tfnn live on your mobile device 24 hours per day go to tfnn.com and hit watch tiger tv that's tfnn.com and hit watch tiger tv Welcome back, everyone. We are joined by Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Uh, we got a short segment here, but I want to go over this last chart with Tim. This is the uh, weekly GDX we're looking at right now. Uh, so this is a weekly. Uh, actually, on a, on a daily, I do got a, some minor divergences. But uh, okay. what's going to happen here going forward probably over the next year, maybe three years, there's going to be a rotation in the market. They, you know, Again, the, the monthlies um, rule the weeklies, weekly rule the dailies, daily rule the hours, the hours you know, rule the minutes and whatever. But uh, I'm pretty much going to stay long because there's a lot of uh, – monthly charts that are actually on these real small issues on uh, on the gold issues I guess you might say it's probably going to be a speculative bubble yeah. going to happen not, not any, probably not within the next year but when these markets uh, start off slow like this and they're persistent normally there's a bubble at the end and that'll be your cue when you're making too much money too fast <laughs> that's going to be a warning sign that the market's kind of is going to an end right and so i'm kind of just staying long here because again a lot of these smaller issues are flipping to buy signals on the monthly chart similar to what i have on gdx here the okay. uptown volume advanced client indicators i just do a a Bollinger Band on the monthly time frames on these small issues. And if you see the volume coming in uh, where the market kind of went dead on these small issues and the volume starting to come in and that 
mid Bollinger Band starting to turn up and they close above the mid Bollinger Band, that's an early warning sign that a major rally is starting on these small issues. And I think that's what's probably going to, well, it actually, it is happening right now. And so even though there'll be some corrections in the GDX market, there's no sniff on top, uh, at least for the next year, maybe a couple, three years. Fantastic. Tim, so, thank you so much for joining us. We're going to see you Thursday, all right? Yeah, see you then. Thank you. Fantastic. Folks, thank you so much for joining us today. Go ahead and go to our YouTube channel at the end of the day, Tiger Financial News Network. You can check all the clips out from today. It's a great time. Consider subscribing. Folks, take care. We'll see you tomorrow. Building wealth.